The death of a Love Island star has reignited the conversation about mental health and the support given to those who suddenly find themselves in the limelight. The body of Mike Thalassitis was found in a park over the weekend. It's thought he's taken his own life. Joining me now is the psychologist Honey Lancaster James, who has worked on Love Island and also on Big Brother, and Dr Alex George, who was a contestant on last year's show. Thank you both for coming in to talk to me. Um, Dr Alex, is it true that you actually found the press and the stress harder on the show and beyond it than when you were a doctor in a and &E. I think um, when you go from uh, life, as you know it before, to go on the show and afterwards, it, obviously there is a lot of pressure. It's a completely different life that maybe you're not used to and it can, yeah, of course it can be challenging. Honey, we don't know why um, Mike took his own life at this stage, um, but talk us through from your professional point of view how difficult it can be for people like Dr Alex and all those other contestants on all those reality shows mm -hmm. to go from this person who goes to an audition to suddenly being on a programme with big ratings and being exposed to um, the life online as well as in the newspapers. There are undoubted challenges and stressful elements to that for sure. And that's why most production companies do put in place psychological support with people such as myself mm. for both pre-screening, uh, ongoing support during filming and after care as well. I think we have to be really careful here that the reality show element of this doesn't become a red herring because we have a national mental health crisis. We know that suicide is actually the biggest killer of young men, of men under the age of 45. Mm. Now, this is unacceptable. We have a problem where people don't know where to turn for help in general and what I think we need to be really careful about here is drawing causal links yeah I know it's very much at this stage very early stages but I know that he was actually bereaved very very recently and we know that when people are suffering from grief and uh, you know this is a very vulnerable period for them what we need to be talking about is where can people go to get help in general because the reality is that when you're on a reality show mm. actually you do get quite a lot of psychological support sometimes more than you ever get in the rest of your life mm. and you know we were talking before coming on as well that you can access help afterwards but not everybody else you know not everybody asks for it I so think it's really your experience on the show and then when you left in terms of that psychological support Dr Alex. I can only talk about my own personal experience of course and I felt that when I've asked for help I've received it I do think it's really important like you said that there is a wider conversation and not just about reality TV and TV there's a national situation where we have a lot of people who need to have mental health support, particularly, I think, uncommonly young men who don't necessarily always reach out for that support. Mm -hmm. And we need to think about how we connect the services which are there for them uh, and the people that need them. I think that's a really important thing that we do. I will come back on to that. I just want to say we have had a statement in from Love Island who said that they are shocked and saddened uh, by Mike's death, send condolences to his family. And on the issue of support, they say, the programme makers say, we ensure that all of our contributors are able to access psychological support before, during and after appearing on the show. This programme will always provide ongoing support when needed and where appropriate. So, honey, back to this issue. Yeah. Um, and it's in the headlines more and more nowadays with some high-profile deaths by suicide of men mm. what can be done if you think somebody might be struggling and of course some people who commit suicide don't appear to be struggling that I think is one of the hardest things that quite often people will say but even the day before they were acting or behaving normally so we do need to be careful I think there is about educating yourself about looking for signs of change in people around you has someone actually just disappeared and stopped posting on social media or stopped coming out to see you are they withdrawn maybe ask if they're okay maybe send them some, a number of a helpline. Um, please, if you are out there and you are struggling with your mental health, contact somebody who is trained in suicide prevention, such as the Samaritans. You can call them. And I believe the statistics are something like they get a call every 16 seconds. Mm. Um, so this is a great resource. There's Young Minds. There's Mind. There are lots of charitable organisations. But I think we also have to be aware that just on a national level, we need to see the investment in mental health care so that there are people to turn to at that moment of crisis. Yeah. whatever the issue has been yeah. for you. So key message there, look out for change. Uh, Honey and Alex, thank you very much for coming in to talk to me about this. Thank you.